So today, Gopinath chose the verse 43 from Vilapa Kusumanjali. I have to read. He is not here. Next time we will catch him. Okay. We will start. Just to suit your proud yeah, people. It's allowed. Yes, one moment, Gurudev. Just to put Mike a little bit closer. Is it okay now? Now it's okay. Okay. <clears throat> Just to suit your proud peak, the Prince of Raja places your feet on his head, thus making it even more beautiful with the mark of your foot lack. Yeah. When we lie, make your feet most splendid with this nectarian foot lack. One more time, I will read the verse. Just to suit your proud peak. The Prince of Raja places your feet on his head, thus making it even more beautiful with the mark of your foot lack. When will I make your feet most splendid with this nectarian foot lack? So this is one of the beautiful verses from Vilapa Kusumanjali. And it's so many nice points are in each word of this verse. And when they devotees are together, when they are in the same mood, in same bhava, they are very eager to relish all these expressions of pure emotions which Raghunath is writing, and later on, which Anantadas Babaji is also giving his comments. So, Raghunath, obviously, in these words, is very absorbed in his Varuk wish. And he wants to serve Radhika, and to suit her proud peak, her proud angerness, mana. And we can see here the position of Manjari. She wants to suit Radhika. She doesn't expect that Radhika suit her. No, she wants to serve Radhika by suiting her, because she see how Radhika is so <clears throat> anger, disturbed, and she wants to serve her by making her a little bit cool down. And because of that, Raghunath is speaking Radhika, these words, these words, remembering her on the pastime, remembering on the lila with Krishna, how he tried to suit her, how he tried to remove 
her anger. So by talking to Radhika like this, Raghunath is trying to suit Radhika by remembering her on Krishna's attempt to suit her. So this, this is the very unique position of Manjaris. And then Raghunath is continuing and saying, the prince of Raja places your feet on his head. Mohan is placing your feet on his head. And I want to see this scene. How he puts your feet on his, on his head. This is also suiting my heart. Because I always want to see you together. And I'm very proud when I see how your lover, how your lover is subdued and conquered by your love. This gives me a pleasure. So, Prince of Raja places your feet on his head, and what is happening? Thus making it even more beautiful with the mark of your foot leg. Because Krishna personally, with his own head, put Radhika's feet on his head, trying to suit her peak, suddenly his head becomes more beautiful. He's always nice, he's always beautiful, he's always sweet. But with this specific mark, ornament, He's becoming more sweet. And Manjaris are enjoying, looking how his sweetness is increasing because of Radhika's foot lack. This is the proudness of Manjaris. I want to worship this kind, this guy, this Krishna. And I'm proud on my Swamin. Tarunji, you want to say something? If I, am, uh, if I can? Yes, please. Um, this is also in a broader sense. You can see that we are not interested in any, in any form of Krishna. We are only interested in Krishna when he is with Radhika. And that means when he is with Radhika, he is even more beautiful than he is when he is alone or when he is with someone else. And vice versa, it is the same. So when Krishna is with Radhika, he is the most beautiful, most Mohan, Mohana Rupa. And when Radhika is with Krishna, she is also the most beautiful. So both are she is sharing this. One is more beautiful in the other's association. This is very, very beautiful. And the mantra is really love to see how the how Krishna is so submissive to their Swamini, and here we have this which we talked last week. This pride is very legitimate. So this pride to see Swamini as the victory, as the victorious one, this is the pride of the Mantras. They are bright that they they can see that, that Krishna is putting his head under her feet in a submissive condition. The Mantras are very happy. Thank you very much, Avanji. We can see, yes, what is Manjari Bhav and difference between Manjari and Saki Bhav because Krishna will never do this in the presence of other Sakis. He will never subdue himself so much in the presence of Radhika and put her lotus feet. So Manjaris are especially fortunate to witness, to observe and witness this situation, this special lila. 
So it describes also unique, sublime position of Manjuri. Thank you, Taranji. It will it will never happen in the, when there is when Lalita and Vishaka is there. This this Leela will not happen. It will uh, first of all, Krishna will maybe not do it. We don't know, but it will for sure not be the fact that Radhika will never in the presence of Lalita and Vishaka. She will never touch the head of Krishna with her feet. She will never do this in front of her superiors and also not in front of the Sakis. So this is very very. But this is Unadut Shvalarasa Swabhakti Shriyam. This is what was never, ever there. We can witness this now in Croatia and Germany and Japan. We have now access to this most beautiful pastime, which, was, which wasn't even possible for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So how fortunate are we, you know? It's beautiful. Janandaji, I uh, see you. Yes. <laughs> so I'm... Please. So I feel in front, of, in front of Manjari, especially Krishna behave, Radha, Radha Sevika. And uh, Krishna is, you know, you, generally speaking, Krishna Supreme Lord become Dasi or Dasa <laughs> of Radhika or, you know, Shisha, Radhika's Shisha. This is also very much amazing, which he, like, ta, like Tarun Baba saying, this is very previous age, does not, uh, uh, does not revealed be, because so secret, secret of secret. And also this Manjari's service is very much amazing. I just, uh, uh meditating. Krishna's head decorate the mark of Radhika's footwork. Actually, Radhika's foot is already red. So, generally speaking, should not, you know, we not, don't need to put red color because already so red, but Manjari did this put this red colors footwork because Manjari is expecting this pastime. Manjari want to see all these pastime which Radhika show Radhika's superiority, Radhika subdues. Moham. And this, this described Prema, or what we say, Mahababa, Madanakya Mahababa could control even Krishna. This is a very, very, very beautiful scenery. Jayananda, isn't there in the, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita? I am not so good with learning the verses. Um, isn't in the Chaitanya Charitamrita the verse where Krishna is saying to Radhika, "You are my guru. You are my. You are when when he is openly smart, Prabhu is saying, you are my guru.' And Swamini is actually Krishna. She, she, Krishna accepts Swamini as as guru. I think it's in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, right? Yes, Radhika the Prema Guru, Ami Shishanat. <laughs> yes, yes. Always uh, Krishna become Shisha disciple. Mm. Radhika concerning love because love Krishna could not understand so much. So, mm -hmm. you know, yesterday we are describing uh, Prema Bhaiticha, also many, many past time. So Krishna could not understand really Radhika's love. So therefore Krishna want to, want to know more the truth of a glorification of Radhika. Also he wants to taste this Madana, you know, Madanaki Mahababa, or a kind of radicals, so much deep feeling. So then Mahababa appear. So therefore, Mahababa pastime is very important for us, especially someone who want to become Manjari or Radha Dasi. Because 
without understanding Mahaprabhu's pastime, we could not understand Radhika or Mohan fully. So therefore, you know, this also indirectly, directly, we could understand Mahaprabhu's glory also, Radhika's glory, Mahaprabhu's glory. Do you want to say something to share about this meaning of red luck on the footsteps? On the feet of Radhika? Who? Gurudev. Gurudev, Gurudev. Yes, please, Gurudev. I am listening. Yeah. No, please, yeah. Gurudev, share something. We are also listening, Gurudev. <laughs> Here, Gurudev. <laughs> This is she is always symbol of the passion to serve to his freedom. That is Sabhagyavati. And today, freedom, this Sabhagya on his head, Krishna also wants his Savagya, fortune, but she has, that she wants to put this on her head, that he also can be very Savagyaman to serve her Samani, who is always giving full love to him. So, he wants to do to become Savagyavan by the serving to Rakit. He feels fortunate himself to do that. And this Manjari is our attitude. That is Bhav Las. This mood of Babalas is expressed <coughs> in this second part of the words and say, When will I make your feet most splendid with this nectarian foot leg? <coughs> this is my Seva. Hmm. This is Babalas for your happiness. And for his happiness also. And to see the happiness of both of you. Yes. So this is the mood of Manjari. This is the mood of someone who is incompletely intoxicated with the love for Radhika. And this intoxication Raghunath always wants, or Tulsi, wants to express through Seva. Also, Not to take a rest. Also, the color red, the color red on the feet of Swamini may indicate, you know, when we take the lotus dust of the feet of the Vaishnavas, you say that all the power and all the mercy and all the, the Kripa is going through the feet of the Vaishnavas. So here, Radhika's feet are red, and uh, the red color is all, also uh, a symbol for Anurag, 
for very, very deep love and anurag for Krishna. So Krishna also hangers for that one. The, the feet must be really beautifully red because it's also a sign of uh, anurag Swamini has for Krishna. So he is hankering for that also. And it's coming through the feet. We know that, that when we bow to the feet of someone, the love is going through the feet. So this is also a perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. He is hankering for her love yeah. because she is his teacher you know, of love. <laughs> so the commentary of Anantadas Babaji. Sri Raghunathas Swarup Vesh is very vivid. And in this absorption, he prays to Swamini for her devotional service. How wonderful is his savor of these visions? Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but this is so glorious. Baba is so... You know, Baba is so special. You hear now, we have been educated, Goranga. We have been educated. You, this line, repeat this line when he says, here he hankers for her devotional service. We always <coughs> have been educated for his devotional service, you know. This is Manjari Bhav. You, the, the Vaikunda Lokas and the Vaidhi Bhaktis, they want to be servants of Krishna. But Baba very specifically here says her devotional service. So the Raghunath Swami is giving us a perfect example. We should not pray for his devotional service. We want the shelter of the lotus feet of the Seva to Swamini. I think every word Baba is using has so much deep insight. It's not his service we want. It's her service we want. Sorry. No, sorry. That's why the Gurudev is also make uh, this point. Read Vilapa, read Vilapa, listen Vilapa, relish Vilapa, and finally realize your manjari Farup by relishing Vilapa Kusumanjali. So, Baba is saying, like you said, Tarunji, Sri Raghunathas Swarup Vesh is very vivid. Because he is completely absorbed in his Swarup Vesh like a Manjari, in Stai Bhav, we say. With full heart, intensively, he prays to Radhika. And one thing Baba said, that is devotion. This service through Manjari Bhav is a devotional service for your son. Devotion to means one place I listen morning that the feeling of Swami to fulfill that desire is devotion. To feel that and do that to fulfill that. That is devotion. How agitated he is when he loses this consciousness again. <coughs> Those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. And those who are advanced in bhajan also experience some kind of succession of experiences. Otherwise, how could they continue? I will read again. Those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. 
Realization experience. Realization is experience. Yes. And nothing else. And the power is the type in Sarupa. Yes. How will deviate? Mind will go a different place. Is experience the life feeling to disturb? We will come in our Sarupa. In my Sarupa, we experience means the life we choose. For And another tip of devotee now is, and those who are advanced in bhajan also experience some kind of in bhajan. Bhajan means who is giving maximum time. Those are advanced in budget because they are going deep. They also experience some kind of succession of experiences. Otherwise, how could they continue? It's and not possible. Yes, yes. Correct. And also, I felt this succession of experience. This is kind of a Durban Sumriti. Like Ragnata's vision is continuously going through. And this experience is in his Swarupa Besh is very vivid. So, it is say, at the stage of Rati, Baba, we could have this kind of experience. So, his, or his Nichasita Manjaris, so he was, he is showing how we could experience if we could advance in Bajan. Guru Dev mentioned, a maximum time, maximum concentration in, in a Swarupa Besh. This is also, Baba is very nicely expe explained. Rade, rade. One thing, I see succession in Bhajan. It also one deep meaning that Succession means you succeed without more doing. Means you know effort when you 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 got the through the succession of your previous some uh, scars previous. Uh, thing what you don't know, and it we succeed from our spiritual master realization also. Wow, that is also we succeed. Wow, Guru Dev, we also succeed the feeling from our Guru Dev, right? The eyes you feel is something when I listen the the words of Temple of Love, then I think that is not my words. It's it's some some divine words. How it can come? So it, this is taxation. I got the mercy of Gurudev, who was telling that time. And I am also relishing now this verse. It's, 
This is sex station. I think so. Go there. This is the real meaning of parampara, right? Yeah. What is the meaning of every word in this book? I get surprised. This succession of transcendental experiences wow. including even their dreams are the life support of the Premika devotees. You see, drink from the airs drinking Drinking now what? What is the loud return? What is the word? Loud return, please. Life support. Uh, I will read again. This succession of transcendental experiences, including even their dreams are the life support of the Premika devotees. Ah, life support, it's life support. Sri Raghunathas Swarupavesh is genuine and not at all false. Life support, life support also means that without bhajan, without bhajan, life is meaningless. And without kripa, yes. the life cannot come in good. And without kripa, when we not realize something, then it's no life support. Yeah. Mm. Then we want to support my material body life. Mm. We want if to. If you are looking for other life support, Gurudev. Yeah. If we are looking for other life support, because then is the problem. Mercy, <laughs> I have no much effort, and I don't get mercy. Then I need it. Support and there is support, material life is support. I feel and I change that way. I try to take support from that way outside. So everyone needs some support, life support. Yeah. But where to take this life support and from where and from whom? From what? We have to succession, to succession. Yeah. Because we cannot do so much efforts without succession. Yeah. Baba is continuing. The sadakas should first endeavor for these experiences. And afterwards, everything becomes natural, as is the case with devotees who have attained rati. Yeah. Sadaka should. This is the sadhana. Yeah. This has to be right. The sadhakas should first endeavor for these experiences. And afterwards, everything becomes natural, yeah. as is the case 
with devotees who have attained Rati. So we can see, Gurudev, here that this position of Rati is the crucial position for Sadaka. Because from that stage of Rati, Stai Bhav is fixed, Ishtadev is fixed, relationship is fixed, heart is melting, humility is present. Sarupavesh is there. Sarupavesh is there. Little understanding of Sarup is there. But not realization is there. Yeah. I know, but I don't realize it. And it's interesting awesome. that when this level of rati combined together with strong relationship with Ishtadev, with Radhika in our case. This paragraph read again. Yes. The sadaka should first endeavor for these experiences. Oh, what experience? That read. The, this succession of transcendental experiences. No, more, more from beginning. More. Ah. Those who have attained perfection, no, have nothing else but experience. And those who are advanced in bhajan also experience some kind of succession of experience. Otherwise, how could they continue? So we have different kinds of devotees, as I can see. Someone who attained perfection, Premika Bhakta, and someone who is on the path to attain this perfection, but he is very, very serious. But he had also succeeded something. Yes. You see, he also succeeded something. Who is the perfection? He succeeded is a bigger amount. And who the practice? They also succeed something. It's not empty. When he will leave, also there is succession that devotee will get some success, but not like a perfect. Perfection, succession is different, and who is not perfect, they also succeed, but they will leave some little property. Read this. Yes, I will read again. Those who have attained perfection have nothing else but experience. Only realize experience is life. Second. They don't need anything else. Second. After. And. And those who are advanced in bhajan. Also experience some kind. Of succession of experiences. Uh, some, some kind. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Not so thick, not so condensed, uh, but, but some kind drops. Yes, some. There. You will also think from there as you see. Also, this is 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is also giving great hope, Gurudev. You know that not only the perfected souls have experience, that is a given. They only have experiences. But sadhakas in sadhana, they also have some kind of experience. And this is what we all desire for. And this is what is giving great hope, that even in the stage of sadhana, experiences will be there. So this is what we have to desire. It will be there. Otherwise, how could they continue? <laughs> this is the answer. Some hope is present. Otherwise, how could we can continue? We will become dry completely. So this succession of transcendental experiences, including even their dreams, yeah. Dreams. Uh, yeah. This succession of transcendental experiences, direct experiences, uh-huh. including even their dreams. Right. They are not unconscious in the dreams, or they are dreaming some foolish things are the life support of the premika devotees yeah. in the vague stage in the sleeping stage in a dreaming stage these kind of devotees are always relishing the succession of transcendental experiences yeah so this is they are our hope. Yeah. They are our light. Shiragunatas Swarupavesh is genuine and not at all false. Sadakas should first endeavor for these experiences. Yeah. And afterwards, everything beca- becomes natural as is the case with devotees who have attained rati. So Baba is saying here, Gurudev, sadakas, those who attain rati and those who attain prema. Three kinds of devotees. Rati. Bab. Rati is the highest. Rati is the wife of Ramadeva. And Rati means then they become blind in the madness that there are many, but they don't see anyone to fulfill their goal. That's the Rati. Sri Guru Charana Rati. Rati means madness, never mind go different place, my eyes go different place, and anything I cannot think one pointedness is a madness, Pagalpa. If the Rati not there, Karma cannot attack you. So Rati may to attack Kama Dev and Krishna Kama Dev attack when Rati is there. 
badness. How sweet it is to be with Swamini in a transcendental absorption. The experienced devotee is always immersed in this rasa. Yeah. How sweet it is to be with Swamini in a transcendental absorption. The experienced devotee is always immersed in this rasa. And become natural. Great agony awakens in Sri Raghunatha's heart when the vision of the previous words disappears from him. And his heart is floating once again on the waves of anxious prayer that carry him back into the kingdom of Lila. This time, he or she will anoint Shiradika's food souls with the lack dye, saying to her, Hey, Shyamaju, do you know the greatness of the food lack? How sweet are these words, even if they are just uttered within the mind. How sweet are these words, even if they are just pronounced or speaking within the mind. When the smarana becomes very intense, it is as if one speaks them directly to Swamini. When the smarana becomes very intense, it is as if one speaks these words directly to Swamini. Hey, Shyamaju, do you know the greatness of the fruit lack? Meditation on this Raghunath's words or Tulasi's words. Bhajan on his words, on his emotions, are so sweet and gives a drop of transcendental experience to Sadaka. When the Smarana becomes very intense, <clears throat> it is as if one speaks these words directly to Swamini. One doesn't think anymore, I am doing Smarana. 
<clears throat> this is Vispurti of Sri Raghunatha Das Goswami. Sri Das Goswami sees that as Tulasi Manjari, she takes a cup of foot like and the brush while sweetly saying. Rajendra Nandana's head will become more beautiful when it's anointed with your foot lack as he tries to suit your peak by placing your feet on his head. But that doesn't make Krishna inferior. It will increase his superiority. The Goswami say that Sri Krishna's greatest qualities are that his mind melts with love and that he is controlled by love. This attribute gives life to all other attributes. I will repeat again. Sri Krishna's greatest qualities are that his mind melts with love and he is controlled by love. And this attribute gives life to all other attributes. I was just I was just reading in the Prema Bhakti Chantrika that when when the heart of Krishna melts out of compassion for the fallen living entities, for the jivas in this yuga or every, anywhere. So when the heart of Krishna melts out of compassion, he will send Guru to the jivas. So Guru, Guru is a, a symbol of the heart melting compassion of Krishna. So we should never disregard or we should never see Guru as someone ordinary. So when the heart of Krishna melts out of compassion, Guru comes into our life, and this is the best thing in in a life of a jiva can happen. So Gurudev is the personification of this mercy. Like we say, Samsara Dava Nanalita Loka, the rain cloud is showering the rain of mercy, and Gurudev is this, this personification of this compassion. Otherwise, the jivas will never have the opportunity to practice bhakti without guru bhakti without guru kripa without guru bhakti lata beach without this personification of the melting compassion of krishna in the form of sri gurudev there is no way we can advance yasya prasado bhagavat prasado yasya prasado nakati kutopi without the kripa of guru as the manifestation of krishna's karuna compassion there is no way we can advance Now, this next sentence is, who is giving him this Karunya attributes? Why he is so compassionate? Sri Radhika is a embodiment of that love, so naturally she controls Krishna the most, and Krishna's quality of Prema Vashyata subjection by love is manifested to the utmost when he is with her. So we can see that this Kripa Shakti, Karunya, Kripa Shakti is even above him. Kripa Shakti of Radhika's love is embracing him 
and he is able to give a kripa because he is receiver of kripa out of love. And Radhika's kripa is the most exalted kripa. Even Krishna is hankering for that kripa in the form of her foot leg. She is giving him kripa, prasad, special for him. This red foot leg on his head. And when his heart melting because of her love and her kripa, then he can give some drops of that kripa to others. Yeah. Beautiful. When the poet Jayadev was describing in his famous Gita Govinda how Krishna held Radha's feet on his head just to suit her peak. He couldn't find the right words to end the Sanskrit words. While the poet went for his bath, Krishna himself came and wrote the missing syllables down for him in the book. Dehi pada palavam udaram. Oh. Dehi pada palavam udaram. Give me your generous lotus feet. Oh. We meditate on Krishna as he submits himself to Sri Radhika. The lack from Radhika's lotus feet sticks on Krishna's head and the marks form its decoration. So this is the best decoration, best de ornaments for Krishna. Although he has so many earrings, garlands, necklaces, this cow stuba or whatever he has, peacock feather, but the red luck of Radhika's lotus feet makes him most beautiful. And he's hankering for that. He is saying, Give me your generous lotus feet. We meditate on Krishna as he submits himself to Sri Radhika. The lack from Radha's, Sri Radha's lotus feet sticks on Krishna's head and the marks form its decoration. The colorful peacock feather crown cannot make his head as beautiful as this red foot leg of Sri Radhika. The kinker is know the purpose of this very well. She, Lila Shuka says, You are uniquely known as Shiki Pincha Mauli. He who wears a crown of a peacock feathers. Why does Krishna wear the peacock feather? When he enters Rindavan forest, to tend the cows, the peacocks, seeing his fresh monsoon cloud-like luster, 
dance in ecstasy. Seeing their dancing, Sri Govinda Nataraj, the king of dancers, dances along with them, imitating them by wiggling around on his knees and lifting his hands. When they see this, the peacocks dance in even greater ecstasy, dropping a feather or two. Krishna thinks that the peacocks are saying to him, O oh God of love, Faith, O oh God of love, if fate had given us human bodies, we could have served you with the fruits and flowers from the forest. But alas, we are not so fortunate. We are just the birds and everybody loves our feathers. If you would lovingly accept this insignificant offering, then we would be blessed. So Krishna, who, is, who gives himself away in exchange for an offering of even a spoon of water and tulasi leaf, accepted this simple gift of love on his head. Sri Radhika makes the best offering by printing her red footlock on his head with the great pride. It is the love with which she does it, that increases the beauty of his head, not just the color of the footlock. Radhika's proudness is out of love for him. Giving him this footlock is out of love for him. And in touch with her body, this footlock is becoming so delicious for him. Whatever, it's written somewhere, whatever touches the Mahabhava or come in the ocean of Mahabhava becomes automatically Mahabhava. Yeah. So these re ordinary, let's say, ordinary red leg, becomes becomes Mahabhav. And when Krishna puts this kind of reddish Anuraga Mahabhav on his head, then he is completely in ecstasy. And this is the way how Radhika is serving him, giving him a pleasure. So the transcendence becomes decorated with the color of pure love in this way. Transcendence means Krishna becomes decorated with the color of pure love in this way. Gora, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is embodiment of that color of pure love. Srila Kavi Karnapura has expertly glorified Radhika's footlek 
as follows. In his book, or the poem, I don't know, Alankara Kaustuba. One day, when Sri Radhika was in an independent mood, Sri Haris was anointing her lotus feet with a foot leg, and he became so attracted to the sweetness of these feet that he held them to his chest. So that lack that was not dry yet got stuck to his chest. May that red lack on Radha's lotus-like feet that sticks on Hari's chest more beautifully than even Srivatsa sign, Kaustuba gem, gem, and the goddess of fortune, that is praised with eloquent verses by the glow of rising morning sun that destroys the nocturnal darkness and that perks like a blooming red lotus flower in the bluish water of Yamuna River. Let this red lack protect you. In the same way, Manini's foot lack increases the beauty of Hari's head. One day, Srimati is angry with Krishna. So Krishna falls at her feet and says, If you want, look at me or speak with me even once, then how I can live? Pacifying her proud anger by placing her feet that are moist with perspiration on his head, thus coloring it with her red foot lack and making his peacock feather fall off. Krishna is the um, emperor of the kingdom of Rasa. And by holding these feet on his head, he becomes Rasika Sheka, the crown jewel of all relishes. Although Krishna is emperor of the kingdom of Rasa, Rasova Isaha, Akila Rasamrita Munti, by holding this feet on his head, he becomes Rasika Shekara, crown jewel of all relations. By Radhika's love, he is able to relish. And Manjaris are seeing him like Rasika Shekara, like a crown jewel of relishes. Not ordinary relisher, but crown jewel. Yeah. And what makes him crown jewel? Radhika's red leg from her lotus feet. Oh. I praise Hari, who is gladdened by a wonderful festival of play, who is the very form of intense uh, chanting rasa, and whose, and whose beautiful peacock feather 
rolls at Sri Radha's feet. This is the words of Manjari poet. <laughs> no one who is in another bath can glorify Krishna like this. But only Manjari poet can glorify him. Like hmm? I praise I praise Hari, who is gladdened by wonderful festival of play, who is the very form of intense uh, chanting rasa, and whose beautiful peacock feather rolls at Sri Radha's feet. Because he forgets everything and becomes absorbed in Madhurya Rasa. Krishna is called Rasa Gana Mohana Murti. Embodiment of thickly condensed flavors. Such Rasa cannot exist if there is still a fever of awe and reverence for Krishna as majestic Lord. Tulasi holds Swamini's feet to her chest and paints the red foot leg on them while making her Relish the rasa of so many lilas. She dries the lack off by blowing on it. Manjari is drying this red lack by blowing on it. Very difficult to hear, sorry. You couldn't? Very difficult. Okay. Yeah, but something is sometimes not very clearly coming. So if it is possible, please louder. Do you hear? I hear sound is crystal clear. Sound is good, but louder. Loud. Ah. What can I do? I don't have loudspeaker, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the band here, so we have so noise. Who else but an expert kinkari can render such a service? How beautiful is that red black? It looks like the king of sunrise taking shelter of her reddish lotus food souls to serve them. The sun is, after all, the friend of the lotus flowers. Anuragini Tulasi, admiring the beauty and loveliness of these food souls tells the red luck. This is very interesting conversation now which is coming. When Tulasi is talking with the red luck, it's not that matter for her. It's personification of Mahabhava also. And she is completely in Anurag, and Baba is saying Anuragini Tulasi, when someone is in such a passionate, transcendental passionate mood, he talks with the wood, he talks with the stones, he talks with the red leg. With a bumblebee. <laughs> bumblebee, yeah. This is the madness. Yeah. Tulasi's 
picking to lack. Or red, foot lack. Don't be distressed thinking that you are not qualified to color these coral red foot soles. So we can see here that foot soles are reddish like a young corals. And around is this red passionate lack around the feet of Ravika. It's not true. A small amount of good fortune, uh, sorry, my, it's not through a small amount of good fortune that you can attain the shelter of this feet. As a result of taking shelter of this feet, your fortune will simply increase. You will be able even to beautify the curly locks of Mohan. Blessed you are for attaining the shelter of Mahabhava Mai's lotus feet. So this is the sweet words of Tulasi talking to Red Lack. How many sweet things Tulasi speaks within her mind? Swamini's mind is elsewhere. Her mind is immersed in the rasa that was served to her by Tulasi. Now we have two kinds of minds, focus mind. Manjari is focused on Radhika's feet, but Radhika's mind at the same time is focused on her lover. Tulasi attracts Swamini's mind by saying, Hey, Shamaju, we will feel blessed by seeing your beautify, you beautify Mohana's crest. God. This red lack will increase the beauty of his deep, blackish, curly locks. And from Gaudiya Vaishnava Acharyas, we can learn the greatness of surrender to Sri Radha's lotus feet. They love Radha more than Krishna. Radha Sneha Adhika. And this is the great gift of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srila Jiva Goswami laments for those who don't take shelter of Sri Radhika's feet. In the age of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, although they may have taken shelter of Sri Krishna's feet. And Jiva Goswami is lamenting like this a person who may be a king, but who doesn't serve Lord Hari. A person who may be very generous, but who doesn't offer anything to Lord Hari. A poet who doesn't glorify Lord Hari. A person who surrenders to a guru without surrendering to Lord Hari. A person who may be very qualified but who is not dedicated to Lord Hari. A person who may be very sincere, but who doesn't take shelter of Sri Krishna. And he who doesn't follow the footsteps of Sri Radha. 
Vraja's goddess of fortune, these seven persons pierce my heart like a, I don't know what is written here, javelins, javelins, like a spear or something, yeah. Stop here, do the or we can continue. I don't know. I think it's wonderful that there's one sentence, so in one little sentence in this whole purport, which is saying the whole Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, and that was um we shall meditate on Krishna who is submissive to Swamini's lotus feet. That's it. That's it. But what it's all about. This is one sentence, and in this one little sentence, everything in Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy is there. This is only possible from a Manjari Bhav point of view. We are we meditate not on Krishna and Dwaraka. We meditate not on Kurukshetra. We meditate not on this and that. We meditate on Krishna, who is submissive to the lotus feet of Swamini. So this is Manjari Bhav. There cannot be said anything more. This is the central point of Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy. This is what we are, as Manjaris, are very proud to see. And this is the prayochan of the Bhav we should desire for. One little sentence. This is really fantastic. One thing also I want to say. This mark is where two places, one on the head and one in the heart. Radhika marked two places. And Krishna takes two places marked to teach his devotee. That if in mind Radhika is not there, many things are there. You are unmarked. And in heart, she is not there, is not marked heart. We need mark made seven. We want to be a mark seven. Krishna mark, Krishna is, is mark taking to teach us. We become, he is in the Mahaprabhu mercy. He wants to relish this Manjari bhav, bhav Daswati. And this is the, his teaching that uh, who want to follow this way, they have to give this mark of I show you fortunate and you want to be fortunate, he has to remember this mark. So I'll give it. You want to be a Savantivati. What is English word? Savantivati? Very fortunate. Very fortunate. Thank you, Guru. This is really beautiful. To be marked on the head and to be marked on the in the heart. I think that we can conclude here. There's nothing more to say beyond this. <laughs> Thank you very much, Tarunji, Jayananda Ji.